The gown I'm wearing in this picture is called a shawa kameez. It is a traditional dress for women in many Muslim countries like Afghanistan and Pakistan. There seems to be nothing special about this shawa kameez. It is not made of very delicate fabric and there's hardly any decoration on it. But to me, it is special because it is a gift from an Afghan granny who spent almost all her savings and bought it for me. She would like to thank me for saving her daughter and two grandsons from a very difficult delivery. I'm Jiang Li, a gynecologist from China. I joined Medicine Sans Frontières, known as MSF, also is known as Doctor Without Borders in English, in 2012, and then headed for two missions in Afghanistan and Pakistan, respectively. During my mission in Afghanistan, there were over 1,200 deliveries per month, which means my colleagues and I graded more than 4,000 new lives in three months. My colleagues and I therefore named the maternal hospital Baby Factory. I got to know MSF since I was still at medical school. As a future doctor, I could not resist the attraction of providing medical care to patients and saving their lives in an extreme environment. But at that time, this dream seems to be out of my reach. I didn't have any clue of how to realize it. However, in 2006, when I was doing my residency training in Peking University People's Hospital, I found one of my supervisors, Dr. Tu Zheng. She was the first medical field worker for MSF in mainland China. She did her first mission with MSF in Liberia for half a year. When she came back, she shared with us her experiences and stories. I would like to share with you one story that is deeply carved into my mind. One day after full day's tiring work, Tujun sat in the car by the window. She was worn out waiting to go back to the compound. Just then, an old man came to the car and knocked on the window. He said, Doctor, I just would like to express my gratitude to you. I'm the father of the patient you have just saved. Thank you so much for what you have done. Looked at the old man's face, Tujun was greatly touched. She felt all the hard work was worthwhile. I was fascinated by her stories and experiences. And it reassured me that this is the work I would like to devote myself to. And my dream may come true as long as I make an effort to it. Since then, I paid more attention to my clinical training as well as my English. Because language is always an essential skill for an MSF field worker. In 2012, after becoming an attending doctor, I felt it was time to step out to see a larger world and to undertake more responsibility as a doctor. I finally joined MSF. In the next year, I accepted my first mission with MSF, quit my job at Peking University People's Hospital, and set my foot on the land of Afghanistan, a country that has suffered from wars and conflicts for decades. Everything was new to me in Afghanistan. Instead of working in a well-equipped top-level facility with my Chinese colleagues, I was exposed to a strange and challenging environment. Educated in a Chinese background, although I had um, a lot of 
experiences communicating with foreigners before, and I had passed numerous English tests. At the beginning, I still felt lost in this English-only environment. I was even not so familiar with the、uh, medical terminologies in English or Latin, because all I learned before was in Chinese. I was trained in one of the best medical schools and hospitals in China, and you know, the workload and pressure for Chinese doctors are among the highest in the whole world. So before departure. I was quite confident I could manage the cases and my mission. However, when I started working there, I was a little shocked. Including me, there were only two gynecologists. We were the top decision makers, and we had to carry out the work. There's no one else to turn to, only ourselves. The number of deliveries. Was huge, and the cases were much more complicated because the women there received very little regular prenatal care. I worked around the clock, and came across so many complications I had never met before in my practice, only in the textbook. It was the same for my colleagues from other countries. After my Brazilian colleague's first night shift, she was so tired, but excited. Hey Lee, you know what? I practiced almost all of Williams' obstetrics last night. Now recalling my three months' mission in Afghanistan, I might not have been able to make it without the support from my colleagues, my patients. And their families. As a team, my colleagues tried their best to run the project. The field coordinator, medical coordinator, admins, logisticians, everyone was invested in his or her own position. There was always very open and smooth communications among us, and we spared no effort in supporting each other. I think these are the keys. Of a very successful project, my patients were very nice people, but suffered from the consequences of wars and conflicts. They were vulnerable, but at the same time, they were very tough. I had a patient who had very severe postpartum hemorrhage. Her situation was so bad. That we thought we might lose her, but the next morning, when I walked into the ward, I found that she was still there. She made it, and she even struggled to sit up to try to give me a hug. My patients never hesitated to express their kindness and appreciation to us. Every morning, when I was doing rounds in the inpatient department. I will receive hugs and kisses from my patients. Many Afghan granny touched my face and my forehead and said, "Allah bless you," after I saved the lives of their daughters and grandchildren. They trusted the doctors. I will never forget one granny. On the second day of my arrival. I was doing a neonatal resuscitation to a baby boy, who had extreme difficulty in breathing. I did everything I could, but still failed to save him. This was the first time I saw a baby dying in front of me. I could not accept the reality, so I kept on doing the ventilation. At that time, the baby boy's grandma came to me, took the ventilation mask away from my hand. She held my face and said, "You have did your best. Allah has taken him away. Thank you, and may Allah bless you."
I was greatly moved. As a doctor, it was always me to comfort the patients and their families. I have never imagined before that one day I would be cared and consoled by them in return. Such trust and appreciation provided me the greatest power to move on, to keep my passion towards providing medical care to patients in those resource-limited areas and in countries under the threat of wars and conflicts. Years ago, when Tu Zhong was doing her first mission, the international field workers of her team was, was surprised to find that she was from China. Because at that time, there were not so many Chinese field workers in MSF. But things have changed. With the tremendous economic development in China in the last three decades, the younger generations, such as the 80s and the 90s generations, possess a broader and more internationalized vision, as well as a greater abilities. They are more willing to devote themselves to global humanitarian activities and have already been equipped with certain capacity. I have received mes many messengers from medical students and young doctors asking me how to join MSF. And the number of Chinese field workers in MSF is increasing steadily in recent years. So it is not just me that make the choice to be part of global humanitarian activities. I'm just one of the members of these generations. Internationally, China has also changed its role from an aid recipient country to an emerging donor, shouldering more and more responsibility as a great power. Every year, the Chinese government is donating more to those low-income countries or areas under natural or man-made disasters. At the same time, there are more non-governmental organizations from China and Chinese people stepping out to provide aid. Following this trend, I firmly believe there will be more and more Chinese professionals making their contributions in global humanitarian activities via various channels and platforms in the foreseeable future. As for myself, I have a dream of opening a small clinic with my husband in those resource-limited areas, like some poor places in Africa. Not only can we treat patients during our lifetime, but one day, when we are no longer here, the clinic will be still functioning and providing patients with the medical care that they need. It will be what we leave behind. It is still a dream at present, but I do believe it will come true someday. Thank you.